Hi everybody, this is Pamela Coey and here's another uh, snail mail envelope that I'm looking at from Vicki Edwards and she's in Montana, my state. And notice the beautiful stamps, uh, interesting envelope, and um, let's take a look at what's inside. Okay, so we've got all these lovely swatches. Here's some Arches watercolor paper. You can actually see the embossing here. And some beautiful rice making paper and netting. That's very cool. So we've got two things that are red and here's some more rice paper. So I get all different sizes and shapes and you know, Sometimes the artist will tell me a little bit about the different swatches and usually they do because I think they like to share, you know, why they included these particular items. And there's a couple more. I like to just lay them out first. You can kind of see exactly what I'm looking at. And she writes, Pam, these colors and textures are my most beloved. Some old watercolors, papers for collage, block from the first I love you card. From my man, you are amazing, Vicki. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool too. So again, um, the question is, I've got these other collages that I'm trying to uh, make a cohesive larger piece that will be about six feet by six feet in size. And so I use the ones that I finished as reference for how I'm going to make this next envelope fit in with that um, theme. Okay, so um, I love her envelope. I think the variety of what she has and the fact that she has told me that these are really her uh, most beloved, you know, types of things, um, that's very meaningful. And the last one I did was kind of a vignette. Um, and this one was Elise Katz. And I've done some other grids, but I've not done kind of a overall grid that has maybe more pieces that are of a similar size. So maybe I'll try that just because she has so many interesting things here that, you know, again, these are all her favorites. So I kind of want to um, pay attention to what her favorites are. So I'm also looking at the front and the back because they can be different too. Obviously this is the right side of what she's showing me and that's the back side. She has text, so she must like text. Okay, so I'm gonna get out my, my pair of scissors here. Sometimes I tear things and other times I like to cut. Um, or I may do both. Like, um, like this one here has that beautiful torn edge. And I'm thinking of a grid that is kind of made up of rectangular pieces because I haven't done that yet. So um, I might just start to piece things together. So much nice material to work with here. There's never a shortage when I open these envelopes. There's always like a lot more than I can use and that makes it hard in some ways to choose. But uh, let's see here, this one. So right now I'm just tearing in a roughly rectangular shape that they're kind of all similar in length. That's one kind of grid. I mean, there's variation in color and texture and line and all those things. So then you want to have one thing be kind of consistent just so that uh, there's cohesion throughout the piece. Um, this one is like Swiss cheese. <laughs> and here she's got some very beautiful uh, text on this collage paper. So I could either, you know, tear it this way where it's vertical or I can go this way. And I tend to like to go this way so that it's less obvious what the text says. I don't always do that, but I think in this case, um, at least one of these pieces will be that way. And then, you know, how many do I want to have on here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, that might work there. I also have the back side of these. Here's the brown. Go for the lighter value because I have, I want to have a lot of variety of value. So I go like this. And I really like her card. I like her writing, but I also love that crow. 
And as much as I, I really don't want to, you know, tear this, um, I just think it's really cool to have that, the bird there. So, um, hopefully she won't mind. Um, I guess that's why people send me these things because anything they send me might end up in the piece. And I'm going to try and keep this roughly um, the same relative size. Might have to, oh, I lost his beak. Well, that doesn't, that's not so good, is it? But it is a shape that's interesting. Maybe I'll just stick him here. And I want to incorporate her name in here too. So maybe that's where the envelope comes in because her name is written right there. And I think I'll tear this. I'm trying to be careful to cross out all the addresses because it makes the editing a lot easier when I do the editing on these videos. I think, well, I guess I can tear it. And there's some of the black coming off with it, which actually could be a cool thing. Okay, so this is much longer than the other pieces I can, um, whoops, tear. I think I want to torn edge on both sides. Uh, maybe I'll leave part of it, you know, not not torn. So there's, um, could be part of her name there, and then maybe this one. I'm going to cut some of that away so you can still read it, but And then the two can kind of take up a spot like that. That's kind of cool. Okay, so now what have we got? I mean, there's a lot going on in here, so maybe I'll cut some of that away or tear some of that away so that there's less green, less contrast, because that was high contrast. Now it's lower contrast, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, I think I'm liking how are playing together. Now I'm just looking for one little thing to add behind those pieces. And I'm looking, let's see inside of the envelope. That's the brown. It's the same as that. It's on the back side of these. Ooh, that's kind of cool. That's a different color, different value. And these are papers, so they're all going to be light. I think maybe this would be good. Um, I'll tear a little bit of that. It doesn't have to be very big. I might want this one smaller. Remembering that this is only one of about 160 pieces that have to speak to one another in a, in a way that makes sense. It's all about cohesion. It's work in a series first and then taking the entire series and making it into one piece. Um, this is the last one I did yesterday. Uh, this one was Elise Cat. So I like how these two go um, together. I think that works very well. And I'm just going to kind of line them up here. And I don't need to show all of them. I just want to kind of take one that's brightly colored and see how that works. I think that's okay. Um, this one's it doesn't really matter which ones I choose. I think if, if it fits with four, you know, in, in the, in, with four together, then it doesn't matter if I have 50 or 100, you know, which I will have well over 100. It's kind of exciting to think that way. Um, but if it works this way, and I think it does. So what's very cool to me as this is kind of a vignette grid. Um, this is a grid, but it's kind of a, um, what would I say? Um, it's a variation on a grid because uh, this is obviously more of a direct grid and then there are variations on a theme. This to me is more of a column um, and this kind of again square square so I kind of get a feeling more of these strata and then this up here gets broken up. So that's what we're going to be talking about in the pro membership further on later on. Um, we're going to be talking a lot more about different types of structures that allow you to take something like this where, you know, really each piece is so unique and doesn't really speak to the neighbor 
how you can have them um, all, like how do you have your cake and eat it too? I like to think of it, um, grids are often that way. You get to put little bits of everything you love, but the structure is there. So it allows you to get away with that. And you couldn't normally, you couldn't just like take all of this and throw it onto a painting and expect that to work. So um, yeah, I think I'm pleased with that. So that's good for there. I'm gonna say that that one's just great. And I'm gonna set this one aside and I'll glue it down later.